Turning to our coronavirus coverage, here are the top three things that you need to know before bed tonight. Number one, our nation has hit a grim milestone. There are now more than a million confirmed coronavirus cases all across the country. This is according to Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. now has about a third of the global cases. Number two, businesses and local leaders are meeting about reopening Friday, but some leaders are concerned it may just be too soon. The public health director says cases are still on the rise in Southeast Texas and not enough testing has been done. And number three, Governor Greg Abbott said in a Facebook post today that the mandatory 14 day quarantine period for travelers from Louisiana has been eliminated, but it will remain for those traveling here from several other states. And reopening the state means slowly getting back to normal. Restaurants are some of the businesses that will be allowed to reopen with their dining rooms opening starting Friday, but they have to follow strict guidelines. 12 News reporter Victoria DeLeon found out how these restrictions will be enforced. Beaumont City Councilman Mike Getz tells me enforcing these guidelines will be a shared responsibility with the city, but restaurants still need to do their part. So you might ask, what does a restaurant group do when you're shut down because of coronavirus? Well, I'll tell you what we do. We move all the tables together and we start cleaning. This start pandemic cleaning. turned Republic chicken upside down. Now the restaurant is good and clean. Everything from the ceiling down. Owner John Swift says he remembers the day they had to close their doors. I do uh, quite well. It was very painful. <laughs> yes. Come Friday, Swift says he's ready to cautiously reopen. Absolutely. And, and you know, we take the, 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 the safety of the general public and our guests that, that we know and love very, very seriously. And so even if reopening uh, you know, means only 25 percent of their capacity can dine in at a time, he says that puts 40 people in their building appropriately spaced out. It's been an unbelievable struggle. We're off about 70 percent. There's no doubt this pandemic has put the economy in a rough spot. When you look at the economic impact of this, you have to appreciate that it is severe, extremely severe. Hadn't seen anything like this since the Great Depression. Beaumont City Councilman Mike Getz believes Texas is ready to slowly begin to reopen. He says enforcing the 25 percent capacity rule will be up to the code enforcement department and the fire marshal. The way it usually works is if somebody it registers a complaint, the fire marshal will go out and will verify whether or not they're within their occupancy limit or not. Extra precautions and strict guidelines are worth it to John Swift. Hey, don't everybody come out once on Friday. But we're looking forward to getting to see those folks that, that, that we've built relationships with now for three and a half years. Other restaurants in the area think that 25% capacity isn't worth reopening just yet. But John Swift tells me the Republic Chicken has taken a hard hit. So they're going to do everything they can to protect the public and their business. In Beaumont, I'm Victoria De Leon, 12 News. Thank you so much, Victoria. Now, what price should Beaumont Mayor Becky Ames pay for her now infamous trip to a nail salon? Today, people gave the city council an earful before the leaders went into executive session. 12 News investigator Lauren Hensley tells us what folks in Beaumont had to say. Seven people spoke out in support of the mayor, many of them offering forgiveness, but six people not easily to forgive. Many of them spoke out against the mayor's actions. Some even called her a narcissist and privileged. This all went on for about an hour. The original photo surfaced a week ago. People quickly criticizing Ames for disobeying an order she implemented. The mayor eventually apologized, saying her decision to enter the nail salon was a lapse in judgment. The photo got national attention, attracting the interest of NBC, The Wendy Williams Show, and even the syndicated radio show, The Breakfast Club. The shock jocks naming the mayor the donkey of the day. Here's some of what the citizens told city council. I would do anything for any of my guests. If just soaking our nails is the worst thing that our city has done, then I'm proud to be a part of it. But you sat down in a closed establishment and received a towel placed in front of you with a bowl of solution and that is a service and that is against the regulations set by the governor. Those who spoke against the mayor asked for a range of punishments, everything from being censured, which is formal reprimand, to being forced to pay a $1,000 fine. That's the fine the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation could implement against the salon owner. 
the district attorney's office, well, they continue to investigate the mayor's action. City council members went into a closed door session to discuss what's next. Now, publicly, three members spoke out in support of the mayor. One council member spoke out against her. We're working to learn what's next. Lauren Hensley, 12 News. New words of warning tonight from Beaumont's public health director. She is concerned about the cases that continue to rise. In fact, Beaumont reported 10 new cases today. Regionally, there were no new deaths today. This now brings our case total to 577 for all of Southeast Texas with 26 deaths and 196 recoveries. Now, Beaumont Health Director Sherry Ulmer says uh, regarding those city cases, she says there's no plateau, no flattening of the curve. She addressed the city council today, kind of breaking down what happened there uh, and her concerns. She reminded everyone that the airport testing site is available, testing anyone. You don't have to have symptoms, but you just have to call in advance. Ulmer says she's concerned about Beaumont's low overall testing rate, only 1,100 tests given. She said, quote, the virus doesn't care. We have to get people to care. All new tonight, a new free research app hopes to record users' COVID-19 symptoms. It's so scientists can learn more about the new virus and understand how it's spreading. As Anastasia Bolton reports, this app will also give the user a snapshot of what's happening in their communities. Without uh, uh, high access to testing, there is no way for us to really get ahead and have an understanding of how the virus is spreading. Necessity is the mother of invention. So here's a free app, COVID Symptom Tracker. We're very interested in really trying to understand the impact of COVID-19 on people in the community. Harvard's Dr. Andrew Chan had already been working with UK scientists and developers to use mobile technology to improve health. COVID-19 changed the focus of their research. Because there's a lot of people developing symptoms and also trying to understand in those areas of the state where potentially there are efforts underfoot to try to loosen, for example, social isolation, are we seeing a uh, uh, worrisome rebound in symptoms? Dr. Srila Sharma is from UT Health in Houston. It's really important uh, that we ha have this app be part of sort of everyday symptom tracking for uh, Texans so that we can then really have the best quality of data that can then drive decision making. Sharma and Chan say users are not required to reveal any private information. Be as anonymous as you want. If you do prefer to be contacted, there is a way to do that too. I think we owe it to each other as a community to be as helpful and honest as possible because ultimately, yes, you are reporting this information for scientists. Scientists who have the ability to understand the deadly disease and diagnose next safe steps, something all of us are interested in. I'm Anastasia Bolton.